This video will cover making a two-part two part plaster bandage mold of a finger. Mold making is a process that involves figuring out how to divide a form up into parts in order to create a form that you can pour into that can separate into multiple parts. There are many, many different techniques for doing this. In the background is a life cast that was made, half of it was made with alginate and plaster bandage, and the back half, which is still on it, uh, was made with just plaster bandage. So in this case, the head was divided up along the ear, over to the other ear, around and uh, along the shoulder. And the front part came off and the back part comes off afterwards. On the two flanking the head are, is a silicone mold of a head where you can see it's divided in the same way, but this is not an object, this is actually a mold. So when those two halves get put together, you can pour into the bottom and cast the head. Important to note all of the little dots around the outside of it. Those are registration keys. Those are the things that keep the two halves of the mold registered to one another. In our, in working with plaster bandage, we are going to be uh, making a mold that keys together on the lip around the perimeter of the object. So if you look in this part of the mold, you can see that the other half of the mold is just slightly cast into the edge, almost like a uh, lid on a jar. So when I put the mold together, it seams together in the pore spout and it is registered side to side. I cannot twist it. So in, in our mold of our finger, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna divide the finger up in two halves. This is a plaster casting of an apple. This is called a pore spout. If you look very carefully at this, you can see a line. That line is the residue of the parting uh, wall or the parting line. That is the widest point of the object. That is the point at which you can divide this object up into two parts. In order to figure out a parting line, oftentimes mold makers will look down an object at what's called the horizon. The horizon is the point, if you are looking straight down on the object, that is the widest point all around that object. If I were to take a pen or a pencil and make, make marks at that widest point, like a dot to dot around the object, and then connect them, that would show me where the parting line is on this form. On a finger, you can divide it up in many ways. It could be divided up side to side, or it could be divided up bottom and top. If you did it side to side, you would have a seam going down the center of your finger, and it would be a little odd to pull the finger off this way, especially when you've got this return here 
in the nail. So I would uh, encourage people to divide their finger up bottom and top. So in order to, you do not need to do this, but in order to just make the process easier for people to understand, I made a series of dots on my finger around the, whoops, around where I'm going to be dividing it. Notice that down here in the webbing in between my fingers, that is where I'm gonna divide my finger. And I'm also going to come up around the nail. You're gonna need, I'm gonna tilt the camera down. Okay, so that we can see the process better. You're gonna need to uh, use your six inch roll plaster bandage, cut it into strips. You're gonna need six strips that are an inch and a half wide. And then you're gonna cut those into two inch wide pieces and one inch wide pieces. Have them stacked away from where the water is so that you're not dripping onto the plaster bandage. It is behind the water. You're gonna need for this demo, uh, Vaseline, a paintbrush. Uh, you're gonna need a, a plaster bandage, a, a container of water, and that should be it. All right, so here we go. So plaster bandage, when you dip it, you wanna make sure that the water is not warm. If it's warm, it's gonna make the process of it setting up even faster. Okay, so I am going to uh, smear this plaster bandage together. I always fold it in half. And then you wanna make sure that the uh, plaster Paris that is on the gauze, that's all plaster bandages is gauze with plaster powder, is smeared together. And then I am going to begin the process of laying down, establishing that parting line. Okay, so you want to smooth the bandage down onto the surface of your skin and really make sure that it is capturing all the detail. You do not want air trapped underneath your object. This is a little tricky to do. Again, I'm folding it in half and smearing the bandage. So I'm gonna continue following that line. And smearing the surface, smoothing it out. Now this is the tip of the finger. So I'm going to go around. You're gonna to wanna to keep your finger. You can slightly bend your finger, but whatever you decide to do, you've got to um, keep your finger steady, almost like you're a patient.
So this piece that I just put down, this is actually a problem, and I'm gonna just put this aside. You do not wanna drop, uh, drip any uh, plaster onto your plaster bandage. That piece had a, a little drip that had been uh, cured from uh, splash, you know, water that was splashed onto it. So here I'm gonna continue smoothing out. The tip is kind of the most difficult part. Okay, so I'm grabbing kind of smaller pieces and larger pieces. I'm always folding the material in half and laying that down, that folded edge down on what will be my parting line. So that piece. Okay. So being that this is folded in half, all the way around, I've established that parting line. So this is two layers and in some places, four layers thick. So I'm just gonna add a piece at the base down here, just so that it's kind of cleaned up. And you want a really clean line all around your object. So you're not going to want to move your finger. Whatever the gesture is that it's in, you're going to want to keep that, hold that uh, pose with your finger. You're going to uh, soon start to feel the plaster bandage kind of stiffening up. And yeah, so you're gonna really need to keep your finger um, static. Sorry, I'm, I think I went off camera there. All right. Don't worry about the residue of material that's on your finger. We'll clean that up before you cast to the other side. So that's about four layers thick. Um, the double, la you know, layers. So it's, you know, I don't know. Um, it varies. In some places it's much thicker. Okay. Okay, so that's fine. I just wanted to get the tip of the finger. Now I'm going to let that uh, dry and cure and smooth it out. It's a little uh, odd uh, sitting here with your finger kind of in the in that position. Now I'm going to wipe, try not to upset the bandage seam, the edge too much. But I'm just going to wipe a little bit of that uh, plaster Paris off of my finger. Okay, this is not totally set yet. Right here, this edge kind of creeped over. I'm just adjusting that, pushing it back. And I'm just waiting for it to set up more. Once it sets up, you're going to need to make sure that you have some Vaseline 
petroleum jelly and uh, some sort of a brush. And you're going to need to apply a pretty liberal coat. It should not be goopy to this edge all the way around the finger. You can also put a tiny bit of Vaseline on your nail um, and your is not, it's kind of getting to the point where it's it's set up, but it's still soft. So I'm just waiting one more minute before I put on the Vaseline. A Q-tip will also work really nicely. Um, this is a brush, but you could use a Q-tip. So on the surface of my finger, I have this plaster that kind of creeped over to the other side. I'm gonna scrub that and use a paper towel to wipe that residue off. If you don't if you don't wipe off the residue on the other side of your finger when you make your plaster bandage shell on this on the second side um, you you could cast that residue um, onto your object so there's a little bit of plaster on my nail okay and then I'm, I'm just just to make sure I got everything and actually let me grab something. This is a modeling tool. I'm just gonna kind of remove some of this plaster that kind of is right on the edge. Okay, you want to be careful that you don't move your finger or else it could pop out. I'm just trying to get some of that residue that might be trapped on the surface. Okay, and just again, make sure this is released with Vaseline all the way around the object all the way around your finger. Okay, and again, Vaseline's very powerful. There's no need to goop it on. Okay, so now we're gonna get started on the second half. So again, I'm gonna fold it in half, smear the, oops, can't really see smear the material and this is where it's important so this is the folded edge and i'm just lapping it i'm just overlapping i don't want to wrap it around because then it, then it'll be difficult to get off and smear it down okay so again i'm gonna repeat this process all the way around the finger, just like we did on the other side. Smear it down, kind of press it into that indentation and smear it onto the surface. The more careful you are with kind of smearing it down, the more detail you're going to pick up in your casting. Oops, this is two pieces. So, then folded edge. I'm going to kind of capture this edge here. And this piece I already dipped. So, I'm going to And I'm 
tip of the finger, you want to make sure that you don't uh, skimp on that. So I'm going to come back and just add another layer on this side. So that piece that I just put down, I kind of put it down a little prematurely. I should have worked the plaster powder into a cream before I put it on. See how that's like really creamy. All right, so we're just about there. I'm just going to reinforce a couple of spots on this side. We're going to be opening the mold down here at the base. So you might want to make sure that the bottom of it is kind of reinforced. Okay, and just make sure that you're not wrapping this around too much. It should just kind of meet up with it all the way around. And I'm smoothing out the surface. That's plenty of plaster bandage for this mold. Um, oops. Okay. So now I'm just going to let that set up. And once that sets up, we can, there's a little spot right here. I'm just going to add one layer here. It's kind of like the inside of where the webbing is. You can kind of tell where the spots are, where it's thin especially if you're casting your own finger. Okay, so now it's just a waiting game, waiting for this side to set up enough where we could take the uh, mold apart. Okay, so just be patient uh, <laughs> and wait for the material to kind of set up. So just to kind of go back, uh, so your object, um, you know, I'm gonna just show you inside of this mold. This mold is okay. Uh, it did have a couple of little air bubbles that were, were trapped. Um, I can hold this a little closer. So that's where I, when I was smearing the plaster bandage down, I did not smear it down uh, thorough enough. I was working quickly and air got trapped under the surface. It's okay, the casting, uh, when you pull the casting out, that will be a positive. So you'll be able to kind of remove that. It'll be like a bump of plaster. So, okay, this is starting to set up. Uh, Plaster bandage gets a little bit warm, but it does not, um, it doesn't get hot. Um, but you know, as plaster gets warm, that means that it's in the process of curing. So it's a little early. Uh, I would not, you don't want to remove your, your mold too early or else it will, it could crack or um, it will uh, deform. So just be patient. You can kind of feel when it's, when it's rigid. Um, so this side is still soft, but it's almost there. Uh, I just wanted to show you a few other things. So this was cast with a uh, plaster bandage. It was just me holding a sphere um, and in this mold, I only cast the edge. Uh, the, I only cast just uh, a relief of my hand. So the back of this is just plaster. 
since this project is about kind of creating a relief um, or playing with kind of uh, elements that you're combining together to create a mask uh, or a relief, um, you know, sometimes casting just half of the hand or part of, of the body is enough. Um, okay, so this is uh, just about ready. So before I try to separate it, I'm gonna just kind of wiggle my finger a little bit. I'm not gonna, I'm not putting too much pressure on it. I'm just trying to uh, release the uh, skin from it. Okay, so the more set up it is, the more, um, the more force you can put on it. So I'm gonna kind of pull down and up at the same kind of time. So it's like here, I separated it right at the top, but it's, it's, still, it's still soft. So I'm gonna wait a little bit longer. I'm trying to open this a little bit prematurely. Okay, here, you can, if, it, if it's too soft, you can kind of feel it um, kind of collapse a little bit. So there's the top of my finger. So that came out nice. You can see the seam where they meet up. And now I'm gonna take the bottom off and just kind of slowly work my finger out. So it's kind of interesting, the Sharpie marks that I put on my finger transferred to the mold. So now I would put the mold together um, and kind of press it together. And if you look in into the object, you can see the seam heels together quite nicely. So you wanna keep your object closed and together so it doesn't deform and then just let it set up. So this is a two part mold of a finger. So now I'm just gonna say a couple of things. This is a, another finger that I made that I already showed you. So uh, in order to cast into this, it's very important. Um, you're gonna need to use some sort of a soap, like Murphy's oil soap or soft soap. Um, if you don't have either of those things, I would say the next best thing would be to use petroleum jelly. Um, the only problem with petroleum jelly is when you put it into your mold and you cast plaster against it, you, you have a tendency to get a lot of air bubbles on the surface. And then also your casting will have kind of like a greasy residue on it. So when you're applying, um, here, let me grab a different brush. When you're applying uh, Murphy's oil soap, and I poured some into this cup, uh, you should use a bigger brush than this, but um, you're gonna you're gonna scrub it in to the surface of the mold. Um, obviously, you don't want to be too aggressive, so that you're kind of removing texture. But uh, pour, you know, plaster is very porous, um, and so when you apply soap, it soaks into the plaster, kind of like a sponge. Um, and that soap barrier is going to prevent plaster from sticking to the casting. So I already put one layer of Murphy's oil soap on this and I'm doing a second layer right now. I'm going to put it on there and it's going to it's going to be wet and you want to let it dry out before you cast into it. So in other words, it's going to absorb into the surface of the plaster. And um, once it's dry, the soap is dry and you've done like two or even three layers, 
and you don't have any wet spots, then you can put your, uh, your mold together and cast into it. So I'll leave this out for maybe like a half an hour or so with it open. And this again is, this is a casting that was done uh, several hours ago. So, so it's, it's set up enough that I can separate it into two pieces. Um, this is the casting that we just did and I'm gonna let that sit for maybe a half an hour before I put soap on it, okay? So that's a two-part mold of a finger. All right, so um, now to cast your finger, this is has been coated with um, like three layers of Murphy's oil soap that was brushed onto the surface um, with uh, with a brush, and then it 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 dried. So I don't want to put I don't want to put too much on it right now because I've already saturated it um, and I just you can put a rubber band around it very tight you could also if you want hot glue it um, around this edge this is a waste mold which means when I pour plaster into this and it sets up right um, I'm then going to submerge it in water to soften the plaster bandage and peel it off to get the casting. So unfortunately, you're probably not gonna be able to get um, multiple castings out of the plaster bandage. Um, you could try, but um, it's probably not going to release that well. Um, so and if you don't have Murphy's oil soap, you can also use Vaseline, um, but you, you will, um, need to make sure you have a release. So either soap or Vaseline. Don't goop it on with the Vaseline if you use that. Um, but, uh, so I just, um, I didn't have a rubber band. And so what I did is I just took uh, off of one of the surgical masks. There was an elastic band and I wrapped it around. So you're gonna need something like a cup. Uh, and I put, a paper towel in here. So I need this to be upright. So you have to think about the level that this is at so that when you pour liquid into it, it doesn't just spill out the top. Okay. So um, anyway, so you got to secure your object together. Um, the other thing is all of these objects are going to need either a string uh, inserted into the plaster so it kind of fuses with it or um, this is the wire that's in your kit and I just bent this like little U channel that could be embedded into your object so like here's a, a casting of a spoon and that has the wire in it so that we can punch these through a form in order to cast them the other thing you could do, this is, um, this is like a, a plastic form that I put uh, grape leaves in or uh, that, that I found. I just put that in the form and cast against it. So that's the texture of the grape leaves. And I just used the fabric that was, that was in the kit and bonded that into the back. Um, you know, the, the material, let's just, well, let, let, I'll, I'll come back to that in just a minute. Let's get this poured. So I've got some plaster here. Um, this is not mixed up. Uh, it is it's just sitting, I, I sifted the plaster in there. And make sure, make sure that when you're kind of mixing your plaster that you have a plan if you're going to pour something that you might have a plan for something that you could do to experiment with the material so you're not wasting material so uh notice how i'm like 
I'm really mixing this well. And the other thing is, look at, look at how creamy that is on the tongue depressor, right? It's not milk. If it looks like low fat milk, you have not added enough powder. All right, so I'm gonna pour this in to my mold. Okay, so it didn't go all the way to the top. If I want, I mean, you're gonna wanna think about the orientation of your, of your object. You always wanna kind of tap or um, agitate your object to try and get the bubbles out. Sometimes people will dump the plaster out and then kind of re-pour it. But you're still, you're still gonna need to work those bubbles out of the top. So uh, if I'm gonna use the wire, I'm gonna have to wait until this kind of stiffens up more or else the wire will just drop down into the object. Um, if I do the technique using, um, using string, I could kind of do this a little earlier. You just wanna make sure that that's not gonna, um, that the string is not gonna kind of bond into the plaster. But yeah, it's very important that each of your castings um, is, has a, either a wire or a string or fabric or something else in it. So I'm just, I have um, this, uh, this is like a muffin tray uh, and these castings kind of come out like that. They're kind of interesting mechanical looking things. Um, and use your plaster, don't waste it, okay? Um, also experiment, like this is um, this interesting form. I just had some yarn, I dipped it in the, the uh, fabric and just kind of coiled it uh, into a form. Uh, this was uh, a form that I had all these broken pieces of plaster from cleaning out a bucket, and I just kind of embedded them onto the surface. Um, so I think I showed you in another uh, video, you can also make forms. This is a form out of cardboard, and I put fabric into the cardboard form, and I cast uh, the, the plaster against the fabric. So that gave it kind of this soft, uniform texture. Uh, it was an interesting object. This one I used toothpicks. I don't know if I recommend that. It, it's okay, but they break. Um, so anyways, uh, you know, this is a glove. If You know, something like a glove. If you are going to cast into it, um, you are gonna wanna figure out a way to be able to do that. So wrapping around a pipe, I can pour into the glove and the material will, will hold the form. So I'll have to support this so that it, it's, it's hanging out the bottom. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna just show you one more thing here. Um, move that off to the side. Um, so let's see here. Uh, this is the the finger uh, that I already cast. Okay, so plaster bandage gets soft when you soak it. So I've only soaked this for probably about ten minutes, um, but this has been cast already. But this is not the finger I just poured. This is uh, another one. Um, well, I think everybody should try to make a two-part mold of their finger or something. You could also make a two-part mold of like a light bulb using the same technique. Um, 
So the plaster is kind of creeped around the, the plaster bandage. Um, but to demold this, I'm gonna pull, pull this away and kind of get it started. And it, and it should come off. So there's, there's the top. And then I gotta kind of get the bottom part started. And I'm kind of trying to get it started back here so I don't damage the plaster. Okay, so, and here, oh, so I might actually be able to get another casting out of that plaster bandage. But, you know, here is a two-part plaster bandage. Um, I'm looking for a tool here. Two-part plaster bandage uh, casting of a finger. So you can come in here with a tool, maybe even modeling tool and kind of scrape it. This is called chasing when you clean up a casting. Um, oops, I'm sorry, I was off. <laughs> uh, and, and you can clean up your, your casting, get rid of the seams. Um, and yeah, so I don't know if you could see that, but you know, uh, plaster bandage can actually capture pretty good detail. I mean, I can see, I can see the fingerprint on this and, um, and then this could be mounted. So it's sticking out of the form. And, um, actually I might be able to put this back together and get another casting out of it. Plaster bandage is really, um, when you cast plaster into plaster bandage, um, it's usually uh, kind of a one shot thing, but um, I can dry this out, soap it again, and probably get another casting out of it. Okay, so um, that is casting a finger.